In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about the content browser of Cinema 4D, which is a really handy little resource, particularly when you're starting out or you want quick scene fillers. Uh, it's got loads of content depending on the product that you buy. So if you buy Studio, you get all of the content browser. If you buy Visualize, you get the Visualize content. If you buy Broadcast, you get the Broadcast content. Or if you've just got Prime, you'll get some Prime content. You find it by accessing this little tab here, Content Browser. Double click on Presets, and then you find the content. Now if you're running the demo of Cinema 4D, you will be very limited with the content. Um, so if you want all the, the whole stuff, you do need the full product to have a look at all of these. And then you'll see um, various different folders in the preset for different aspects. So for example, if we go into Studio, there's lots of stuff based around Studio. For example, characters. We've got nice rigged characters. You can just drag the slider to see those a bit bigger. Um, already rigged up. So for example, Bruno. Just bring him on, bring him into the scene. And there I've got a walking rigged character that I can play around with. So if you're interested in a particular area of Cinema 4D, for example, character animation, these pre-built characters or pre-built content are very handy for figuring out how to set things up. So you can see we've got the walk system in here, we've got the character system, so we can start investigating those and see how that character was rigged or use it ourselves. Now a lot of the content that we see, I'll just get rid of that one. Um, so if you go to the likes of Visualize, for example, uh, so you just go up a folder using this or back a folder using this. Um, so I want to go to Visualize here. I'll just shrink this down a bit now so we can see a little bit better. Um, you've got animations, cameras, environments, materials, objects. I'll just jump into materials. You can see they're all nicely named like wood, walls, tiles, all those sort of things. Just have a quick look at walls, so different wall, wallpapers. Uh, we've got bricks in there as well, or well, there is the lovely brick generator, which we'll cover in another tutorial. Um, but if we go to the objects, what I'm going to do is just throw a few things in the scene so you can see how this works. And it's really simple to use. So we'll go to um, one of these here, so you can see the different the different areas that we've got. And I'm going to go and look at tables. And then you've got a variety of different tables. You've not got hundreds of things, but overall you've got quite a lot of content and they're really handy when you're starting out or you just want a few scene fillers. Um, to see which one I want to use. This one. And when they come in, the great thing is that the one they're to scale, so they're nicely scaled. The poly count is very efficient as well. You can see not a lot of polygons in that particular table. It renders fine. So it's all correctly set up material-wise. Down the bottom left, you can see the materials are all set up. Um, and you're good to go really. So one way you can work is just purely by adding things to your scene. So we'll go up and what I'm going to do is just go to kitchen and in here you've got accessories. There's lots of accessories and we'll just add a couple of glasses to the scene. Um, so I'll just grab a glass like that and pop it up. And these, this is a great way when you start with Cinema 4D just flick into a bigger view, oh, sorry, a, a right view. Just make sure I put that wine glass nicely on the table. There we go. And then I'll come back out. And I'm just going to change the angle of the front just with this rotate and drag in this one just so we can see this scene a little bit better. And I'll lock off the Y axis by clicking this one. And then when I drag, I'll move the glass just on the table. And if you want a, another copy of it, what you can do is um, just go on the table, hold down control, and you'll get a copy of it as, as you drag. And then I'll move this one around in the scene as well. And we'll, we'll have a third one as well. Um, so if you hit render now, we've got the basics of a scene already going on. Now I'm just going to cover something that a lot of people seem to miss inside Cinema 4D, which is to do with anti-aliasing. And you'll see if you're following along in this tutorial that in the glass you get this horrible jaggedy edge. And this by default, the default anti-aliasing for Cinema 4D is set to geometry, which is really, really quick. But if there's any transparencies in the scene, anything inside there isn't anti-aliased. So it just looks at the, the solid objects basically and anti-alias is that. Very quick to fix. We just go into the render settings and we go to anti-aliasing, change geometry to best, and then that will calculate. There are different ways. You could just put a uh, tag on that particular object and say 
just anti-alias all of that particular object. Now you can see at the minute things are looking pretty rubbish. The glass doesn't look very realistic. Um, and we've got part of that, the problem is that we've got nothing to reflect in the scene. So you can also use the content browser for that as well. So what we could do, we could go up and go and find, oh, keep going up, in environments, HDRI environment, pop that in the scene, the glass should start looking more realistic. Take a bit longer because now we've got reflections in the scene. Whenever you're doing reflections, that's one of the most complicated things to do in the scene. Um, but you know, you'll know you get a nice result with it. So the other thing that you can do with the content browser is you're not just stuck with this content. You can mix and match content as you see fit. These are full 3D objects. You can change the actual objects themselves. So you could go in and change the polygons if you want to. That's a little heavy. But one of the easier things to do is to change the materials themselves. So that glass is OK. It's not too bad. It's a little bit white for my liking, though. And we could try a different glass on there. So you can see we've got the various different materials here. If we go and have a look at the objects themselves, we can see it's like this blue blue tinted material here which is probably why we're getting these funny colors so what you could do is go and have a look at your materials and bring in uh, a different glass material so you see lots of different ones in here um, and we could try I think that one looks quite nice so we could just replace that material and now as we render that will be the material that's used instead and we should see that glass starts to look quite a bit nicer in the scene. So that's a little example of some of the content you can use in the content browser so it's all to scale we've got everything rendering up now and of course we can take this further and further now we could change different render settings we could turn on a bit of global illumination and all sorts of stuff to make it look more realistic but we're already getting there so you can see like the glass now looks a lot nicer um, in this particular scene. Uh, than we had before and it gets you up and running of course in this scene we could do with a bit of shadows you know so we turn on the GI and we, we'd get that a very small tweak you could do is to try the likes of ambient occlusion which will help get those little shadows I'll just turn it on just so you can see quickly but you can see we're already getting there so just jump in and go down here effects ambient occlusion apply it to the project and I'll just render a little bit just down here and we'll probably find that that, yeah, there you go, you're getting that darkness where the table and the glass join, which really helps bring out the realism of the scene. Um, of course, you can start messing around with uh, physical rendering from here with R13, all kinds of stuff. But that hopefully gives you a little example of how the content browser works, a little bit of the content in there to get you up and running.